I'm kind of nervous of just totally being myself around anyone. This was on my doorstep, pine cone. Kind of nervous about it. These videos have been a nice opportunity to just to be myself because I'm sitting in my room, just in my living room right now, with no one else. Max is upstairs. Anyway, I was taking her home, I was taking her to her car, and there was this guy waving us south, and I was just like, okay, we're going west, so I was gonna, just going to go around him and then keep going west, so I turned to go around him, and there was a dude on the ground that had been hit by a car, and his, he was off his bike. I assume he'd been hit by, I think he, the car that had hit him was parked there, I think. He was like on the ground in all this pain, and, and I was like, whoa. So I turned left, and I just went down the street, and I was going to go around the block and then keep going. But then I thought, I, I said, I got to go back. Or I got to go talk to him, not go back, but go help this guy. I can help this guy. So I pulled up, and then instead of going left, I went right. And uh, she, she was like, okay. She seemed, she said, are you, she didn't really say, she just kind of said, why are you going right? I said, I'm going to help that guy. So I parked, and then I went over there, and I walked up, and there was a guy holding his head, like, kind of heading the show. Heading, that's interesting. Uh, that's funny. I was going to say that's funny, but I, then I, I switched it to interesting. Like, that's the evolution of what I am. Five years ago, I would have said, that's funny. Now I said, that's interesting. Evokes two different, uh two different pathways, depending on what words you use, more than two, how you put the words together. It was interesting that there was a guy there kind of taking charge, holding his head, making sure he wasn't moving his head around or trying to. There was somebody on the phone, so I knew 911 was being called, and there were two people, like by his feet, standing, looking nervously. I think there was just two, there might have been more people behind. I just walked in, I walked through, down to the guy, and put my right hand, I kneeled down by him, I, I didn't crouch, I kneeled down with my right knee down, and I put my hand on his shoulder, on his right shoulder, over his white t-shirt. I could feel his body, his heat, he was sweating, his body was really working. He was in a lot of pain. His ribs, I noticed his ribs. And I, I looked at his eyes and I calmed down. All the people behind me were laughing almost out of nervousness. The guy to my left was kind of freaking saying, this is the kind of wound that's just gonna get worse later. And I, I thought, in my mind, I was thinking, why? I questioned that. Why would you say that? Why would you make it worse? It's healing. I told the man, you're healing. Your body's healthy. It started healing as soon as it got hurt, which was excessive to say that. I learned a lot from this experience. If anything, just think it in the mind as I speak it to him. And then he would look up at me in my eyes. And when he looked at me, immediately he calmed. It was all he was experiencing. He calmed. He was started breathing normal, normally. He started just, just relaxed. And he'd look at me for like three seconds. And he didn't speak English, as far as I could tell. He was speaking some Spanish at the, by the end of it all. He, he, but he was calm, because I was calm. I, I, I just enabled myself to stay calm, even in a situation that seemed intense. And that's a key to an enlightenment, but a key to being able to heal people is to stay calm. You take, I took in their pain. I took in his pain. In the moment, I was taking it in, feeling it, thinking about, like, like 
sending the thought of that my water was passing into his body, that the moisture was healing, bringing it. I only have one hand on him. I didn't put my other hand on him. That was something afterwards I thought that's, that would be more beneficial. Like two magnets, you could put them both onto somebody. Like those things clear, you're actually sending an electric charge to, to help the body to repair itself. I, then I put my hand down over his ribs, which I saw were the focal point of his pain. And I passed my hands over his ribs on his right side. And then I looked at them, and I looked away from his eyes, and he went into all this pain. All this focus on the pain, because I was focusing on the injury itself. I wasn't focusing on his face and what was happening. The, the comfortability of just being not even just being, the comfortability of being without any egotistical worry. Just to be and to focus water and current is enough to really help. I was maybe only focusing water or current at any given moment. To do both with two hands. Um, so I realized that when I was looking at his ribs, that that was because I was I broke the connection from his eyes, the eyes, the water, the opened water, also kissing the tongue and having sex with because of the water, because it's inside the body and that's water or the mouth, the water, the tongues. It's that's that's a conductor. That's why sex people say it's such a romantic. Such a, such a deep connection is because of all the current being transferred quickly. But it can be done in the eyes. Especially close to a person. So I looked back at his eyes and stayed there some more. And he looked over at me a few times, three times at least, maybe four, and calmed every time. I told him that he was healing, that he was healthy. I said, you're alive. Then the guy to my left said, we weren't making eye contact at all. I didn't even know what he looked like, actually. That's interesting. I didn't know what any of these people looked like. I think it was a woman on the phone or maybe a guy in a trench coat. But I didn't look, and then the two people behind me, I think, had dark hair. I don't know what their skin color looked like, whiter, whiter, darker, like a red. I just saw the, like the dark hair and the guy to my left, I didn't know really any anything. I just knew it was a guy. So I, like a guy, I don't remember. I saw him at the end. So he said, I'm going to have to ask you to leave when these guys get here without looking at me. We were looking at still at the guy and I... I knew. I knew I had to go to work. I had to be to work in 15 minutes, which is why I had turned in the first place. Because, and then I was like, to me, I was telling her like, my ego is, my egotistical structure is making me, is telling me to avoid helping that guy. And it was fucking with me. So I, I that's why I, I turned back and parked the car and ran and then walked. So he said that, I'm going to have to ask you to leave when these guys get here. And I kept focusing. I didn't say anything. I just kept focusing on him and looking at his eyes and listening to him, listening to his pain. And I heard the sirens in the distance, and I stayed with him. And then the paramedics got there, and one paramedic came over and started cutting his shirt and I had my arm on his shoulder, looking at him. And the paramedic cut through his shirt, and he was struggling a little. The man, he was trying to help. He reached up to pull his shirt off his arm a little. You could tell it, it hurt him to move his arm. He was helping. And then I knew it was time. And I looked up. 
to the man, past the man who had a mustache, who was holding his head, up to the paramedic. I put my arm up behind his leg and then looked down at the man and let go and stood up and said thank you to the man with the mustache. And the paramedic came. The paramedic was just was watching, was watching me or the hands on the man, just watching. We are truly healing. I felt a few of you, a few of me. We are truly healing.